Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here. And it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering in this video is we're going to be looking at components and resultants and we are going to use the rectangular method in order to solve this problem. So what we have going on here is that we have two structural members B and C that are bolted together to the bracket A as shown, knowing that the tension in member B is six kilonewtons here, and that the tension in C is 10 kilonewtons here. <clears throat> we need to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force acting on the bracket between those two. So what we're gonna do first, since we are using the rectangular method, is that we are going to solve this problem by starting out by drawing a free body diagram. So our free body diagram will consist of an X and Y coordinate system here. And our origin points will be the point in which both of these forces collide and act on. So that little dot shown there. So what we have here is that we are going to have our 10 kilonewtons of force in this up right direction. It is acting at 40 degrees off the horizontal. And then we have six kilonewtons of force acting down and to the right. And that is 15 degrees off the horizontal. All right, so that is my completed free body diagram, pretty simplistic. So in order to use the rectangular method, what we are going to have to eventually do is some forces in the y direction and some forces in the x direction. Well, before we get to that point, we have to turn each of these forces into an x and y component. So let's look at each of these forces individually. So here's my x, here's my y. And let's just start with the 10 kilonewtons of force first. So we're going to turn this into an FX and an FY component. Well, we have to first determine which way the FX and FY components of the 10 kilonewtons is going. Well, since the force is going up and to the right, the vertical component of FY will be going upwards and the horizontal component of Fx will be going to the right. Since the force is going up and to the right, the components have to match that, be going up and to the right. Okay, so each component, and let me separate this a little bit, each component will be the force times either the sine or cosine of the angle shown. Well, for the x direction, it is going to be 10 kilonewtons times the cosine of 40 degrees. And it is cosine because the angle is being measured off of the x. The x is adjacent to that angle. And whenever you're adjacent to the angle, you're going to use cosine. Looking at the fy, we have 10 kilonewtons of force. And this time, it will be sine of 40 degrees because the angle's off of the x. The y is opposite that angle. It's not touching it. And anytime you are opposite, you are using sine. So this x component of 10 cosine of 40 pops out to be 7.66 kilonewtons of force, and it is acting to the right. And then the Fy pops out to be 6.43 kilonewtons of force, and that is acting in the upwards direction. So there are my x and y components for my 10 kilonewtons of force. Let's repeat that process for the six and see what we get. So for the six here, it is acting down and to the right, and it is 15 degrees below the X. So the X and Y components for the six kilonewtons of force have to match the general direction. Since the six kilonewtons of force is down and to the right, the FY will have to be down and the fx will have to be to the right. So let's find out what these are. So the fx will be my force of 6 kilonewtons, and it will be cosine of 15 degrees, once again, because the angle is off of the x. That will be, called, uh, that will be associated with cosine since it is adjacent. And then the fy is going to be my force of 6 kilonewtons times sine of 15, because the y is opposite the angle, the angle is not touching the y. So six cosines of 15 
give me 5.8 kilonewtons of force. Oh, that's supposed to be an N. Let me redraw that real quick because that was ugly. Six kilonewtons of force to the right. And then the Fy, which is sine, or six times the sine of 15, which gives me one point. Oh, give me my pen back. My fat fingers keep hitting the little buttons on my pen here. There we go. So we have 1.55 kilonewtons of force, and that will be acting downward. So now that I have my two forces broken up into their individual X and Y components, what I can do is I can utilize the summation equations and find the total in the Y direction and the total in the X direction. So let's work on that. Let's sum forces in the X direction first, and we will take all the forces acting to the right as a positive number. Everything acting to the left will be a negative number inside this equation. So I only have two FXs to add together. I have 7.66, which is to the right, so that'll be a positive 7.66. And then I have 5.8, which is also acting to the right, so it is also positive 5.8. So add those two together, and I get 13.46 kilonewtons acting to the right. So let's repeat the process for the y direction here. So summing forces in the y direction, we will take up as positive. Everything downward will be a negative number in this equation. So our first one, we have 6.43. It is acting upward, so it is a positive 6.43 kilonewtons. And then our second one, we have 1.55 acting downward. That will be minus 1.55 because we're taking up as positive. So 6.43 minus 1.55 gives me 4.88 kilonewtons. It came out to be a positive number, so I know it, it is going upwards. All right, so now I've tallied up the total in the X, total in the Y. What do we do with this? Well. Let's draw a little picture here and show you what's going on. So essentially what we have here, if we redraw our X and Y coordinate system, X, you know what? Let's actually make it a little bit more orthogonal there. <laughs> there, that looks a little bit better. X and Y. So what we have here is that we have the X component, FX, which is right here at 13.46 kilonewtons of force. And then we have Fy up here, which is 4.88 kilonewtons of force. Since these two are going up into the right, the resultant between them has to be going up into the right. So I need to find this resultant and I need to find this angle alpha here. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can look at what's going on here and form a little triangle. So this would be my Fx, which is 13.46 kilonewtons of force. And then I have my Fy, which is 4.88 kilonewtons of force. And then my resultant will be the hypotenuse of this right triangle here. And I know it's a right triangle because the Fy and the Fx will collide and form a 90 degree angle here. Same thing over here, with this angle being my alpha angle. So this is sometimes why the rectangular method is called the triangular rule or triangular method because it forms a right triangle using this methodology. So how do we solve for R? Well, since we have a right triangle here, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for R. So R is just going to be the square roots of my two sides squared added together. So I will have 4.88 squared plus 13.46 squared, add those together, square root them, and we end up with 14.32 kilonewtons of force in that general up right direction. So that's my result in between my two original forces of 10 and six. Now we just need to find our angle alpha. Well, since we are at a right triangle or we're inside a right triangle here, we can just use tangent. So the tangent of alpha is going to be the summation of my y 
over the summation of my x. Well, let's rearrange and solve for alpha here. So we would have tangent inverse of my y, which is 4.88 kilonewtons, over my x, which is 13.46 kilonewtons. And my alpha angle will pop out to be 19.9 degrees. So there is my resultant force. There is the direction or the angle it's at, the location of it. So usually it is best to just redraw a little coordinate system here and show your resultant with its magnitude. Um, oop, it's not 19. <laughs> That's the angle. It is 14.32 kilonewtons in that upright direction at an angle of 19.9 degrees off of the x-axis. And that would be my final answer. And that method shows you how to solve the problem using the rectangular rule or rectangular method. There is a previous video on this channel showing how to solve this problem using the parallelogram rule. So if you want to see that, check that out. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see uh, more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel as this was part 10 of this series. There are previ nine previous videos. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because it really does help us. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.